Eradication of corruption was at the heart of the country's drive for a review of the constitution, and that review gave birth to several powerful institutions that were not meant to just fight graft but also restore public confidence in the rule of law. Institutions were all designed uh, to achieve uh, integrity, fairness, uh, <clears throat> impartiality. Uh, based on merit and based on inclusiveness of all different communities and government and so on. But some of these institutions, alongside the previously existing ones, have done little to change the tide in the war against corruption. At the apex of this unholy pyramid is the Ethics and Anti-Corruption Commission. Just yesterday, its deputy boss was suspended for official malpractice. But his case is just the latest in a string of occurrences that have served to cast aspersions on the effectiveness of the institutions that fight graft and oversee the upholding of institutional integrity. In Parliament, a probe is about to begin into corruption allegations against the chairman of the Public Accounts Committee, the most powerful committee of the House that acts as a public watchdog, but one that now finds itself and its leadership on the cross. Parliament has generally failed. And if you want to see how that failure looks like, you will need to look at uh, the reports of the Auditor General over the years and look at the details of uh, lack of accountability, details of questionable expenditures. Not too far away is the IEBC, another institution that is supposed to be held in the highest esteem as it is for all intents and purposes, the gatekeeper of democracy in the country. This institution is fighting to save its reputation in the wake of what is now known as the chicken get scandal. The police force, the country's primary institution in law enforcement, has long been in the corruption abyss and shows no signs of climbing out, perhaps settled to the reality of inefficiency and a doomed existence. It consistently ranks at the top of Kenya's most corrupt institutions. So just what ails these institutions that have been empowered to perform their mandates but fail to do so? Professor Yashgai contends that the problems lie clearly with the human resource within these institutions. And they have shown no uh, inclination to study the, their, their role their powers, their obligations. People get uh, the leadership that they deserve. Uh, but I would, I would very quickly say that largely Kenyans are responsible because Kenyans uh, exercising their vote uh, in a cons conscientious manner can transform and change this country. Experts contend that unless the government changes tact in its recruitment to emphasize on integrity and until the citizenry are made aware of their rights, the situation will remain as it is, a never-ending vicious cycle. Brenda Wanga, NTV.